I'm John Skinner and this supplements my book Fishing the Bucktail. In this video I'll be fishing a 1 ounce s, s John Skinner Blackfish and Porgy Jig. And this trip is a lot of fun. Uh, actually we're picking it up about halfway through the trip here and I had made a drop um, and uh, I got my limit in less than an hour and I had a lot of shorts and, and some sea bass and other stuff mixed in. So once I had my limit I decided to pull anchor and uh, just search out some other structure because uh, as I've mentioned uh, before that this is my first season fishing newer waters out uh, east of Mattatuck um, and normally I fished well west of Mattatuck for blackfish. So I'm, I'm prospecting a little bit. and. Uh, so this um, here is a spot that uh, you know, I found some boulders along contour lines and that's something that I, I look for and um, yeah, here we go uh, a real nice one and this is very encouraging start to this spot that I'm just checking out. Okay, I'm really excited about this jig. Uh, this is made by SNS. It's called an SNS John Skinner uh, Blackfish slash Porgy jig. Uh, originally, I had asked uh, Stanley Gola, the, the person who runs SNS, uh, for a jig that I could use for porgies. I wanted to be able to cast it off the beach. Um, and you know, I had some other things I wanted. Like, I was pretty concerned about how it would lay on the bottom. and oh, and oh, what it does is it it sits that the hook is straight up. Now the hook is a little bit smaller than what you'll find in most blackfish jigs but geez I just don't see the point of having a big hook in a blackfish jig and um, so this is like perfect for porgies and for blackfish and the fact that it sits um, with the hook pointing up Boy, you put a couple of crabs on there. In this case, I'm using little Asian crabs. In fact, some of them get really small. I got to put like three or four on the hook. Um, this thing lays on the bottom, hook facing up. You put the crabs on there. And I'll tell you what, when a fish picks this up, um, especially a blackfish, that hook's already past those big lips or it's in those lips. It's almost difficult not to hook the fish if you pull back on the jig. Uh, and we're going to get to see that because I'm going to play some unedited video so you can see the, the pace. And here we go. I mean, here's what it's designed for. Uh, originally, my original thought was, you know, to do porgy fishing. But, um, yeah, Stanley really nailed it with the hook size. And it just makes a beautiful uh, blackfish and porgy jig. And that hook is really strong. And we're going to get to see that because I'm going to, uh, you know, be lifting fish out of the water on the jig head because uh, I've already got my fish in the cooler. I don't want to keep any black fish and I always try to minimize use of the net. So um, yeah, you can see I'm, <laughs> I don't have much bait in here. I've got these little tiny uh, Asian crabs and yeah, they work out just fine on the jig. And the hook is razor sharp and uh, boy, if you, you know, watch these next several minutes I'm dealing with some serious current here. I'm in 27 feet of water. Uh, I've got, as you can see, good moving water and the hook sets are basically terrible because I've got this bow in the line and yet you're going to see. I mean, I missed one there and I'll tell you what, I'm not going to edit too much here. I'm going to just play it through because <clears throat> I want you to see how easy it is to hook the fish. I mean, even though I'm not getting a good hook set because of the current and the bow in the line, I'm hooking these fish up one after another and uh, yeah I'm just really thrilled about this jig. Now because I'm dealing with the current and uh, 27 feet of water isn't exactly shallow 
uh, and this is only a one ounce jig, I'm tossing it slightly up current so that uh, by the time it hits the bottom, it's in front of me. And, you know, again, that current's going to push some bow in the line. That's it, just fine. All I need to do is when I feel those taps, you know, just give a flick of the wrist and uh, fish is going to be hooked up. Uh, the rod in this case is a Tsunami slow pitch. It's a six foot spinning rod. Uh, rated 15 to 30 pound test line. I've got a Tsunami Shield 4000 reel, <clears throat> 20 pound test braid that's spider wire stealth. I really like the stealth around rocks. Uh, if you've seen my striper videos, um, yeah, I, it's a very abrasion resistant line. And I'm using a 25 pound test uh, fluorocarbon leader. And at the time that I'm editing this video, the one store that I know has these jigs is J&H Tackle, Oakdale, Long Island, both in the store and online. And as I mentioned, I'm using Asian crabs here. You could just as well be using green crabs or fiddlers or uh, whatever your favorite bait is. I will post some videos soon um, showing catching porgies on this, just little pieces of squid. So, uh, you know, whatever your favorite bait is for porgies and blackfish will work out just fine on this. All right, so I'm tossing it up current a little bit. Uh, the bite is really fast paced, so as soon as it hits the bottom within a few seconds, I'm usually getting a few taps. And what I'm doing is you know, I feel that tap, tap, tap. Uh, the, the way I feel is that at that point, that fish, I don't see how it can possibly pick up the jig with the crabs and not have the hook in its mouth. And you know, it's not a giant hook, it's razor sharp. So a flick of the wrist is gonna hook the fish. It almost, um, you almost can't miss them. Now, when you speak to a lot of your really good experienced blackfish anglers, you know, they're going to mention letting the blackfish chew, get the uh, bait back to the crushers, feel some firm taps. Uh, I'm just not doing that here. Um, I'm feeling those initial taps. I'm setting the hook. And if, if you were to watch that hook set again, it was awful uh, because of the current, you know, pushing that belly like that. And yeah, I, I'm actually fishing on. Um, on a full moon here, which I know is not the greatest time to be black fishing, but you know you do things when you can. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the fish are hooking up just fine, and they're lip hooked, which is great because, boy, blackfish have very tough lips, so I'm not losing any fish. And also, uh, you know, for releasing them, uh, you know, I'm not deep hooking anything, so everything's going back nice and healthy. All right, I'm done with uh, most of the narrating. I'll jump in at a couple of points. Uh, but otherwise, um, sit back and enjoy the action. And the limit at this time is four fish at um, at least 16 inches. So I'm throwing back uh, quite a few keepers on this part of the trip. Sounds like an episode of Cops going on in the background there. Yeah, I guess uh, Mattatuck can be an exciting place. And this rod is a blast. Uh, lightweight, it's got power, but it's sensitive. It's, uh, it's really perfect for this kind of fishing. And like I mentioned, it's a strong hook. Absolutely no issues picking the fish up uh, by the hook because I don't want to net them. And I end up using the same jig a couple trips in a row and uh, 
yeah, it's uh, worked out great.
So between the wind and the current, um, I'm slipping on my anchor and I, I've got quite a bit of line out, which is good because this uh, lobster pot is pretty much straight down, which is um, what's letting me uh, be able to pull this fish up and not hook anything. Um, so I know I've got a little bit of time here. My only concern is I don't want to hit the pot with, um, with my anchor, but I'm not too worried about it at this point because, like I said, I've got plenty of line out. Uh, but what's going to happen in a couple of minutes, another a couple of fish, is uh, I'm, I'm going to get to the point where I'm, I'm too close. And uh, and at that point, I have almost no crabs left anyway, so I'm, I'm going to pack it in. But there's a few more fish left. <laughs> 